What's up? Welcome into another Doc Talk conversation with the Bone and Joint Institute. This one is going to be interesting because the Titans drafted a running back out of Tulane in the third round, 81st overall, Tajay Spears. And there's a lot of reports in conversation about his knee injury history, multiple ACL tears, potential arthritis, cartilage damage. Does he have an ACL in that knee still? So we'll talk a lot about it and try to figure out the situation as best as we can uh, with Dr. Colin Looney from the Bone and Joint Institute, uh, who uh, is one of the great experts that they have there in Franklin at the Bone and Joint Institute. So check them out. Whenever an injury happens in life, it's always inconvenient for whenever that pops up. But you've got friends uh, at the Bone and Joint Institute in Franklin, and their website is boneandjointtn.org. So Dr. Looney, appreciate you jumping on here. And uh, this is maybe outside of the Derrick Henry Jones fracture conversation that we had a couple of years ago. Yeah. This one might take the cake for most complicated and interesting overall with Tajay Spears. I would agree. I think a lot of sport, a lot of us in sports medicine are talking about this. So this is very interesting. Thanks for having me, Austin. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate y'all having us. Absolutely. So let's kind of set the stage for this. Sam and I were on our A to Z sports draft show. Uh, that Friday night when the Titans selected Tajay Spears out of Tulane in the third round, which was a shock, right? A backup running back to Derrick Henry, and then one that has a lot of injury concerns. And so here were Ian Rappaport's comments on the NFL Network right after the pick was made that sent up a lot of red flags across the Titans community. Early in his career, towards ACL, then retore it in 2020. So that's two ACL tears. Went to the combine, and sources say tests revealed a full thickness cartilage loss and no ACL in his knee. No ACL plus arthritis. That means it is unclear how long he is going to be able to go. Is he going to be a one-contract guy? Is he going to be similar to Jay Ajayi, who, of course, is with the Dolphins and Eagles? As of now, it is unclear. Uh, we will see how he ends up, but that is what is going on with Tajay Spears, a much more talented player than where he was taken. A very talented guy ran for over 200 yards in the Cotton Bowl and scored four touchdowns for Tulane in their win over USC in the Cotton Bowl. So to recap, maybe no ACL. He's torn it twice. Uh, cartilage thinness uh, and thinning and then arthritis. Dr. Looney, what stood out to you the most from hearing that from Ian Rappaport on the NFL Network broadcast? Yeah, that, like I said, this has been a very interesting thing to, to talk about. Um, because it is unusual to uh, to have athlete uh, an athlete, particularly at the NFL level, uh, playing without you know playing without an ACL, um, and um, and so you know I, I, as as a sports medicine guy, I will say you know I'll speak generally. I I haven't I haven't seen um, uh, Tajay, and I haven't and I've not examined him and. Uh, the situation may be very different. And um, so when I'll speak generally about someone who's who's an athlete, who's playing high level sports, um, particularly at NFL level and um, and doesn't have an ACL, you know, I, 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 we'll, we'll talk about that because this really brings up a very interesting thing about knees and coping without an ACL. Um, and because uh, it appears um, by the narrative that um, that this athlete's been playing without an ACL. So is that a pot? Like that's possible. That's the response that I keep getting online is like, right. I, I first uh, kind of put this tweet out here uh, online and said, you know, the test results at the combine show Tajay Spears with no ACL loss of cartilage arthritis in his knee. And everybody said, well, surely that's a typo. Surely he's not playing without an ACL. So number one, is it possible? And two, does that mean that he's running with pain? Is it pain free? How exactly does that work for Tajay, who's now been dealing with this for two to three years? Yeah. So the the, the, the you know a patient comes in who's an athlete in the clinic, and he's he's playing football and he tears his ACL. It is going to be our strong recommendation to reconstruct to rebuild that ACL because that ACL provides stability to the knee, which ultimately protects that cartilage that is referenced in the injury. And it also uh, protects the meniscus, which is the shock absorber of the knee as well, that, uh, what, that's really not referenced or discussed in that, the injury. And, and so the, we, want, we want to keep someone's knee stable, and we also want to protect, you know, protect the cartilage 
so that they don't, you know, we don't see a rapid progression of arthritis by not, not having that protection. And um, so this brings up the idea um, and, and the potential of this idea of there are people in this world that are ACL copers. Um, and what I mean by that are uh, the vast majority of, of athletes cannot play without uh, an ACL. Well, everyone's, at least in my age group, everyone's fav favorite sort of sports movie, Friday Night Lights. Like we all, like we all know, the, like watch Booby Miles, right? So he goes, he's got a torn ACL and they're like, nope, I'm going to play. Put me in a brace, right? And he, you know, and we watch, we watched him go out and then you, and then just blow out his knee, right? And that, you know, that's, that is a natural outcome for a lot of people who try to play without an ACL because the ACL is the major, one of the major stabilizing ligaments of the knee. Um, there are, a, uh, there is potentially a subset of people that are ACL co copers or ACL independent, meaning for what other, whatever reason, they can balance through their musculature around the knee, a more stable knee, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is, a, this is not common. It is not um, it, you know, and, and it's, and it's certainly an, a very interesting thing in sports medicine to be ACL independent or be an ACL coper, because generally you play football without an ACL, your knee is sloppy and it's, it's dangerous to be out there. Um, and so that, that's, that's sort of what, what we're, we're talking about today. Yeah, and I, I know that people that are not athletes, that are not out there competing uh, in sports, if they tear their ACL, you know, somewhat after their playing career is over, at times they might opt out, oh, we'll just, we'll just leave right. it. You can live life without it and be okay. Like maybe when it's icy outside, you got to be extra careful or you might have extra pain there. But I do find it fascinating with J Spears playing the running back position that is so reliant upon powerful, violent, explosive cuts and as soon as you brought up ACL coping, I thought of Dewan Blair. I don't know if you, you remember Dewan yeah. Blair. He was a basketball player a decade plus ago at a pit. Right. He had no ACLs after tearing them in both knees. Right. And he was a he was a post player. Now he's six right. foot eight, could play college basketball. He's not making those moves and explosive moves like a running back is. Yeah. But I remember him talking about quad strength, hamstring strength, of making sure that he is abnormally strong in those areas to overcome that. Is that something that maybe Tajay Spears, a, a small compact athlete could benefit and cope with that ACL because of the other muscles he has around it? I think that's, I think you're, you've hit it spot on. I think it's, you, it, it's a, a compensation or coping through, through the musculature of the knee and strengthening of the musculature around the knee and through rehab of the knee that he is, that he has, more of a stable knee than than the average athlete with with an ACL. Now I'll tell you this, and this is just an interesting. You know, we, I was talking to, I was talking about this. Um, my, one of my my friends, my good friends, is uh, uh, Dexter McCluster. He's a former running back for the Titans, right? Mm -hmm. We're yeah. talking about it, and Dexter has a great comment. Uh, he said, "The college football is very physical," and then he said, "But." Things ramp, uh, things ramp up just a little bit in the NFL. And what he means by that, I mean, it ramps up exponentially in terms of uh, the explosive nature uh, of it. So, it, it you know, it, playing, playing with a stable knee in college is one thing, but it's going to be it, it's this is going to be very interesting um, because it is different than being a post player without an ACL. This is uh, th there is tremendous violent force on the knee. He, um, and so uh, this is a, this is going to be a, a, an interesting thing to to watch and see. Um, and the, the the truth of it is, is we, I, I, you know, we're all pulling for Tajay to do great. And I, I I hope I hope he's absolutely the an incredible coper, and that you know, he he brings the Titans to do do great things. And so that that's that's what I find great about this is there is that potential. But there's also there also is the worry of you know, of uh, of a very unstable knee with problems that ensue by not playing with an ACL by playing with an ACL. I, I want to circle back to like the sustainability and those right. problems that you mentioned because you right. said like so the ACL helps 
protect the cartilage, which then helps right. prevent against arthritis. And now the report comes out that, you know, he's already been losing some of that cartilage, that there's already arthritis beginning to set in. Yeah. So in terms of those concerns for his career, right? how sustainable of an NFL career or like how long of a career do you think like an average coper could take at this level, knowing that those things are already starting to occur within his body? Yeah, sure. And, and like I said, I'm speaking in totally general terms, not not knowing that uh, knowing Tajay. So but, you know, and I always say, you know, I always say when I get asked questions like this is, you know, you know, not every uh, not every athlete wears the same size cleat. Right. Sure. And so uh, this is a very variable question. But the problem the problem is, is, is that if you came in and asked me, Sam, I tore my ACL. What, what's the long-term projection of arthritis with my knee? Just tearing my ACL and you fix it. Usually, uh, whether you fix it or you don't fix it, usually after about 15 years, you start to see x-ray findings of arthritis. Hmm. What we're seeing here is very early findings of arthritis. So, so that's not, you know, early in the timeline. And the problem with an ACL, guys, is an ACL creates a very unstable knee. The knee's it, it's it's hard to play on because the knee is actually unstable. It's loose, right? And um, and that allows for injury to the cartilage. It allows injury for the meniscus. And there's there's always a way to to compensate and make up for things. And arthritis actually makes the knee stiffer, right? So arthritis is uh, it has that sort of secondary downstream effect of the knee gets stiffer, you lose motion. And actually, you, you, you can examine a guy who's 20 years out, you know, see, who played football and didn't have his ACL fixed. His knee's pretty stiff, right? And he's got, but he's got significant arthritis on, uh, on his x-ray. It's because of that phenomenon. So as, as arthritis ensues, the stiffness actually is, is, it makes the knee a little bit more stable, yeah. but it comes at a huge price, right? The, what's the huge price of arthritis? Well, it's stiffness, it's loss of motion, it's swelling, it's inflammation, it's pain, um, and and you know that and it, it, it knee arthritis is a big problem, and it's a it's a bigger problem than just not having an ACL. And that was something I was actually going to ask you yeah. too, because I did see that where maybe bone spurs, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Bone spurs right. allow that knee to become more stable, even if it does create a, a certain amount of pain and in lack of motion. Yeah. Arthritis, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It, you know, Mm -hmm. you get these bone spurs, the knee tightens down, it's stiffer, um, which is, you know, uh, know, theoretically more stable, but you know, it comes at a price, right? And that price is inflammation and pain. We talked earlier about the importance of kind of like supplementing the leg and, you know, different leg muscles around his knee to make sure his lower half is more stable Tajay uh, mentioned in a press conference that uh, Titans Media had with him that he had reached out to Frank Gore, a longtime legendary NFL running back who had one of the the best career longevities that like that we've ever seen out of an NFL running back. And he asked him about like, well, hey, how do I have sustained success and remain healthy in this league? Had Tajay come to you, what are some of like the tricks or tips or exercises you would recommend to um, kind of help him stay healthier longer or give him the best shot at protecting his knee? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I, again, it, it, depending if his knee was stable and I thought he could, uh, I thought it was safe to play, then I would recommend, you know, good therapy on the knee to strengthen the quadriceps, steps, to work on the hamstrings, to stable uh, for all the mus- the muscular stabilizers of the knee to, to help with knee stability. And so a good physical therapist, you know, working, working with him, you know, individually is going to be important, I think, um, uh, or working with any athlete mm-hmm. that has that problem. And also um, I think one thing that we've, there's been a sort of sea change in sports medicine about extremity injuries, where there's upper extremity and throwing sports or lower extremity um, and, and football and, um, and soccer is core. And so core can't need be neglected with a, with a ligament injury. And so we really focus on that 
And that's, that's going to be something that's really important for this athlete is, is, uh, is maintaining good core strength on top of quadriceps and hamstring um, and uh, muscle strength around the knee. Tajay Spears is definitely a fascinating case. Uh, 200 yeah. yards rushing against USC, four touchdowns, an incredible season with Tulane uh, on two ACL tears, having some early signs of arthritis, having uh, what uh, was called by Ian Rapport on <clears throat> that broadcast of full <laughs> thickness cartilage thinning. Right. That's a mouthful. Take us through what is that? What is full thickness yeah. cartilage thinning? Because I'm, I'm somewhat unfamiliar and I haven't really heard that as much as you can hear about ACLs and meniscus uh, yeah. in, you know, common uh, talk with sports. Yeah. I I'd say the, um, the cartilage is the, is the white shiny stuff. If you ever, you know, look at the end of a chicken bone and you see that white shiny stuff at the end of the chicken bone, that is the cartilage of that, of every joint. Our joints all have that. And this stuff is fascinating guys. Like, you know, it, it, if you put two pieces of cartilage in, in the body on each other and they move, the coefficient of friction, the, the frictional forces are about 10 times slicker than two pieces of ice together. So it is the slickest stuff in nature, right? It is what makes our joints glide and smooth and healthy and happy. Well, you take that same chicken bone that has that white stuff and then just take, a, uh, just take the kitchen knife and knock off the, the cartilage. And you'll see some 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 salmon colored material underneath that. That's bone. That has the opposite frictional, you know, characteristics. It's like sandpaper. And so um, you're now taking something that has the coefficient of friction of two pieces of ice, ten times better, to something that's like sandpaper. Mm. And that's and that's the problem arthritis creates, right? Because you got and, and so you first start out with a defect on one side where it's just that. The, that white shiny stuff is damaged, but what eventually happens is is that it gets to both sides of the joint, and that's when you guys probably have heard that term bone on bone, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. that's that's a really that's a really bad arthritic problem where you're now missing cartilage on both sides of that joint. Mm, sandpaper on sandpaper does yeah. not sound very comfortable. There, uh, yeah. another thing with Tajay that I I thought about um, as we've been talking about the arthritis and the timeline is one of his ACL tears was, I believe, when he was 14 or 15 years old. <clears throat> and would that make sense that maybe now, because that was in his early teens, he's seeing that arthritis sooner uh, because of that. And then Peter Skronsky, the Titans' first-round pick, uh, also allegedly tore his ACL when he was in middle school too. Sure. And so do you see that with – because you don't hear a lot about middle yeah. schoolers tearing their ACL, but is that something that later on in life – even into their twenties and thirties that they're feeling that effects from the middle school injury. Oh, no doubt. I think the, you know, the, 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 my athletes that worry me the most are those younger athletes that tear their ACLs for the reasons I said is, is, you know, we see a natural progression of arthritis and at the time of the first injury, you can get cartilage damage. You can get a meniscus tear and all of that sort of compounds and, and, and can, lead to more arthritis early on. And that's, that's really worrisome in our younger athletes. And so that, uh, to your point is, is that, that's a, you know, that follows that timeline a bit, a, a bit of seeing arthritis after, after the initial injury. For sure. Uh, a to Z sports doc talk. This one I think has been phenomenal uh, no, with Dr. Colin Looney, Tajay Spears. We wish him the best. We hope he has a fascinating career because he's, he is a fun player to watch. Yeah. So hopefully uh, that he can use some of the, the tricks of the trade uh, to become an effective and dynamic running back for the Titans uh, over the next several years as a third round pick. So Dr. Looney, appreciate your time. Know you got a plane to catch. So safe yeah. travels and uh, we'll talk to you guys again soon. Hey, thanks Austin. Thanks Sam. Great show. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, sir.